everybody, it's Jackie, and I have some things I'm excited to show you today. I'm getting ready to start journaling for September, and yes, I know I still owe you guys an August flip through, and it's coming, don't worry. Um, but I couldn't wait to show you what I'm doing for September. I haven't actually started any pages yet, but what I did do is I designed my own collection. It just kind of happened by accident, and I can't wait to show it to you. So um, let's get started. Um, this is the book I'm going to be using. I bought this book at... Um, a store called Papyrus, which is a, like a card shop, like Hallmark, and they were BOGO, so I bought two. And it's basically just calls itself a handcrafted journal with indigo blue dyed cotton cover and handmade paper, paper 80 online pages. And the paper in these things is really cool. Um, first of all, it's mostly white, but you get the occasional indigo sheet, which I love. White, 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 indigo. Um, and then I did a paper test on it, and it performed as well as a Lloyd's Term 1917. It likes all the things. I did watercolor wet on dry, wet on wet. I did India ink. I used um, a brush pen with homemade India ink. I used um, Ranger Archival ink, Memento Tuxedo Black ink, Sharpie Ultrafine, Sakura pens. I tried scrubbing it with um, watercolor and a little bit came up, but um, for most techniques it worked fine. And in terms of bleed through, it was just the uh, Sharpie pen and my gold paint pen that bled through it. So I am i don't know what this paper is. Yeah, see, it's like gold paint pen here. I don't know if you can see if it shines. Um, I don't know what this paper is, but I'm excited to use it. Um, and then I was just thinking, I just want to watercolor the whole thing. So I'm not using this one. I'm using this one. Um, I thought, I want to watercolor the whole thing. I want everything to be orange and yellow and red. And then I just started thinking, why don't I just make my own journal fodder? I started putting ideas on paper, and it just kind of came together. So I'll show you what I put together. I started out by making journal spots. And I just did this with my, um, you know, my Jane Davenport watercolors. And I just drew some shapes, this is upside down. And uh, I made myself some tabs and some circle spots and I zen tangled on them, and I used watercolors to color them. This is just this piece of sketch paper. And so those were the journaling spots that I ended up making. And then once I had journaling spots, I was thinking, sorry about the smallness of the frame, this is the best I could do. Um, then I was thinking, well, I need, I want some date things so that I don't have to write out the date every day. So then I put together this sheet, and it's got days of the week in, um, I used, just to show you where I started, I started by making a color palette. Um, just picking out colors that I loved. Um, I knew I wanted orange, red, and yellow, but then I was like, Halloween's in there, so maybe I should have some purple and green, and in September, it's not really autumn colors, so I wanted to have like a sky blue, and that's, so everything's based on these six colors, and they're all from the Jane Davenport palettes. Um, so then I used all six colors to do um, my days of the week, and I just scripted them, and some of them I stamped, and then I did two sets of numbers, one in warm colors, one in cool colors. I did, I hand scripted out each of the months in the fall. I had a little bit of space here, so I did some 31s and I stamped out the days are getting shorter, the nights are getting cooler. And I had a little space here, so I did a little I love autumn. And again, I just hand scripted it out. And so then I had all these date sheets. And now at this point, it was starting to come together. So then I thought um, I should die cut some things. So actually, I'll show you where I started. I I just did splotches of watercolor in different color combinations with my collections, and you can see where I've die cut them out. Um, different combinations that I wanted to try. And then I die cut out a bunch of things, some leaves, and some stars, and some arrows, and some words. And now I have coordinating die cuts to go with my collection. And then I thought, you know, I could use some sketch elements too. And so I started drawing icons. And now I have a deco sheet of icons. And then the only thing I was missing, because I don't use pattern paper, I don't really use journaling cards. The only thing I still needed was washi tape. So then I went out and I got this set uh, from Michael's, this Jane Davenport white plain old boring washi and it loves watercolor so I used the same watercolors and I made some tapes. So I made one that was blue and purple with stars and this was using one of the pattern tapes. I did two feet of each 
Um, so now I have a nice thin blue washi tape for fall or for nighttime. And then I did, this one's my favorite. I did a nice thick one in the colors I've been dreaming of, which is orange and yellow and red. Two feet of that one. And then, cause Halloween is in there, I've used one of the pattern tapes and I did it in purple and green. And so I have that tape. And then I'm really loving this combination of light blue and orange and yellow. And so I painted this one and then I covered it with fine tech shimmery watercolor on top of that, like a yellow gold and orange gold and a white gold on top of the blue. And so this one is like shimmery. And so those are the tapes I made. So I've got everything I need. I've got journaling spots, I've got dates, tabs, washi tapes, deco elements, die cuts, and I am ready to start journaling. So um, now that all this stuff is made, um, I wanted to make it into stickers. So I scanned it into um, my computer and I printed it out, some of it. I haven't printed everything yet. I printed out the labels on, this is just plain sticker paper and I'm gonna fussy cut these out and use them in my journal. And the dates I put on clear sticker paper, which is glossy because I won't have to write on top of these. And um, so now I've got those and I haven't done, you know, I'll just use the die cuts the way they are. I just stuck them on this sheet with um, temporary adhesive. I can pull these off as I need them. But the other thing I did was once they were scanned, I flipped them over to my sister and she is attempting to put together cut files for them for the silhouette so that we can actually make stickers that you can cut out and use. And so the question I'm throwing out there, I guess, is are you guys interested in this? Like we're thinking about putting them up for sale in the Silhouette store or starting an Etsy store, but I'm just trying to gauge, is there any interest in this collection from you guys? If there is, I'll try to put something together. I've never done any sort of online um, store thing before, so uh, it might take me a little bit of time to get it set up, but I'm happy to do it if people are interested. Um, but yeah, so this is what I'll be using. I guess that's really all there is to say about that. So um, I guess where we'll go from here is um, I'm going to work on the cover of my book. And I thought I would just keep the camera rolling for that um, so you guys can see how I'm going to put this one together. Um, it's basically, I'm going to tone down the white on it. I'm going to, um, I found when I was running today, just as I reached the end of my run, this perfect little red maple leaf fell out of a tree and it landed at my feet. And I thought, how fun would that be to have on the cover of my journal? So I'm gonna try attaching it with matte medium. It's still like nice and soft and pliable, so I think it'll work. Um, but I've never tried to preserve a leaf that way, so I don't know how well it's gonna work. But So that's the plan. I'm gonna write the words fall on it in this orange paint. I'm gonna use my Intense pencils to put some more blue on the cover and yeah so I'm just gonna um, speed up the video from here on out I'm gonna work on my cover and um, yeah let, leave me some comments let me know what you think can't wait to, for fall like I'm just so excited for fall you know how it is okay let's get started welcome to the voiceover portion of the video so um, in this part we're gonna go through how I made my cover and we're gonna see how I did my first page. So if you just wanna see the first page, um, feel free to skip ahead in the video, but I've never shown you guys how I did a cover before, so I thought this would just be a fun experience. So um, I love the triangles on the front of this book, but I don't like the stark white versus the indigo. So I grabbed my Derwent ink tense blocks and I just put down some medium blue, and if it's too bright in spots, I add a little bit of indigo, and I'm just trying to tone it out. And I feel like it's created a much richer tone, and that makes me really happy. I did the front and the back, but I'm just not showing you guys what I do to the back because it's exactly the same, and I don't think you want to show you want to see me do the same thing twice. Um, but the reason I use ink tense is because it doesn't move when I go to put matte medium over it, so it's a better option than watercolor because it really is just a solid form of ink that is water soluble the first time you use it but when it dries it's permanent. So then I have this leaf and this is a leaf that fell at my feet while I was running I think I said that already and I'm trying to stick it down but the thing about using a canvas covered book that this is is that it's really thirsty like it, it just sucked up the ink tents and then it sucks up the matte medium so I had to put down a few layers until I got it to finally stick 
and it took a lot of coaxing to get this thing down. Um, I pushed it with my fingers and I tried and tried and it wouldn't stick. So then what I end up doing and what worked really well is I grabbed my brayer. I put down a layer of wax paper so it wouldn't stick to the matte medium or the leaf and I just brayered, brayered it over and over again and it stuck really well and it was perfectly flat but it still looks like a leaf. Um, I just had to add a little bit more to the tips and do it a second time and then it stuck down perfectly. So I highly recommend that if you're trying to if you're trying to press a leaf because I did this probably four days ago now, and it's it seems to be preserving it. I'm really satisfied with how it's worked out. So then I matte medium the whole cover because I just want the journal to be safe in case I drop something on it, like I spill a cup of tea on it or something. At least the cover won't get wrecked. And um, again, I did the whole book, but I'm just showing you how I did the front because there's a lot of drying time. Like first the intense had to dry, and then the then the uh, matte medium had to dry. So I cut all that time out, obviously. Um, so then I'm going to put my title on, and I just start with a gel pen so I space out the letters, because the worst is when you go to write a word and then it goes over the edge, because um, you didn't save yourself enough space. So that's why I write it in pen first. And then I go back and I use a small brush, small flat brush, to put some gesso down. And the idea here is that I do want it to be orange, but if I put orange straight on top of that blue background, it's either going to turn into something muddy or it might sink in and you not see it at all. Whereas if I put down this layer of gesso first, it's going to make the orange really pop. And I think that's going to work. So I don't really have any technique here. I just um, use a paintbrush, use my gesso, and um, let it dry before you add the next coat. But basically my title is going to be Fall 2017 because if the last book's anything to gauge by, I ended up filling that book... Um, over three months. I thought I was going to fill it in one month and it took all summer so I think this one's going to... I feel pretty safe putting a season on this one where last time I put a month on it and it didn't end up using it up. So some footage got lost of how I got this title to work so I'll just kind of explain to you what happened. Um, I end up putting the orange paint over it and I put yellow on top of the 2017 and what happens is that although that leaf is brilliantly red for something in nature, when it's compared to the artificial orange and yellow of acrylic paint what ended up happening is that the leaf looked dark and it kind of got lost compared to these super bright letters. So I had to mess around with the tones a lot. and I'll, You'll see some of it, but a lot of the footage of that got lost. But basically what I ended up doing to tone down the letters was um, on the orange fall letters, I took a dry brush and the tiniest, tiniest titch of red paint, just a tiny little bit, and I dry brushed on some lines. It was still too bright after I did that. So then I used the complementary color in an ink tense pencil to um, tone them down. So again, I used ink tents because it will dry permanent, but it also put a translucent wash. So when you take a color like orange, its complementary color is blue. By putting a sheer coat of blue on it, it toned it down um, to something that was more in line with the color of the leaf. And for the yellow, I toned it down with um, a purple ink tense pencil. And that part, at least you'll get to see in the video how it goes from being like brilliantly yellow to just being kind of a muted yellow by adding its complementary, which is violet. So there you can see I've got them all painted up and then I kind of went off the gesso a little bit so I thought just to crisp them up a little bit I'll use my Pigma or my Sakura Graphic One pen to, it's like a marker, like a fine tip marker to outline them and that just kind of makes them look a little bit more crisp and this pen also dries permanent so I don't have to worry about it moving around. That's pretty much what I'm always thinking about when I'm doing covers is always making sure that I use things that are permanent because I don't want, um, the cover takes more wear and tear. So there you can see the orange after I've toned it down with the blue and I just pointed to it there. And then here I go with the purple, I don't have a violet intense block so I grab a pencil and I just scribble it on and use a wet brush to sort of blend it in. I think I had to go back and add a little bit more, but now you can see the yellow's toned down too, and it's and now everything has sort of similar natural tones to it. And so this is where my um, cover took on a very different look than what I was expecting. I was expecting to make a bright cover, but it just didn't work out that way. Um, this one looks a little more vintage, but it's actually really growing on me. I'm, I'm, I, I like it a lot more than I thought I than I did at first when this first happened. When it first happened, I was pretty frustrated, but now I've grown to like it. So then I just grab a simple story sticker. It says something like, life starts over when things get crisp in the fall, I think it says. It's from last year. And I stick it down, and now it's too bright of white. So again, I use the same trick. I just grab an intense pencil. Um, or actually, I use my block in the same blue that I used to do the cover. 
um, and I'm going to cover that up. But first it needs to dry. I always use matte medium on my stickers when they go on my cover because um, the adhesive on them is not always that great. So then I grab my uh, Sakura Gold um, marker. paint. It's like a paint marker. And it's the .7 size. And I highly recommend this one. It's the best gold paint marker I've tried. And I've tried a bunch. But it's a true gold. It's a fairly fine tip. And it's so easy. And I just write my month on the spine and go back and cover up those with blue and now they're faded in and um, then the last thing I'm gonna do is because I put gold on the spine I think the cover needs a little bit of gold so I do a gold border around the outside oh actually what can I do this first I guess so I use um, a white paint pen to just add a little bit of highlight to my letters I just um, draw a line on the right on the left side and the top of each letter and I had to go over these a couple times to get the color to show through enough on the first coat you can see it doesn't leave much color but I went over it a couple times I just included once in the video and you just put down the paint and rub it in with your finger and that way you get like a blended highlight instead of a, a, a really stark one so these are my Gansy Tam, Gansai Tambi watercolors and you can see how luscious the gold paint is it's just so beautiful and yeah the, this is just showing how I did it I put down a little bit of paint and then I would dab it up with a um, paper towel to make it subtle and you can see I did all four sides on both the front and the back and that just gives it a gold border. It has a really nice shine but it's hard to see in the lighting in this video. And there it is, my finished cover. So now on to the first page. And um, this was really exciting for me because it was my first time using my collection. And you don't know when you, divide, when you put together all these individual elements how they're going to come together for a page. But I, I really love how this page turned out. I can't wait for you guys to see it. Um, so I went into it just knowing I wanted to put my month in the middle of the page and I want to do that each month and that I wanted to put a tab at the top so that there will be a tab, a tabbed page for each month. So I just pick one that matches out and I wanted to use that washi tape because again I, when I made that I made it with September in mind. And um, I'm fussy cutting out all my, 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 my printables here and it's really, I like fussy cutting. Like I said, my sister's doing some cut files, she's got most of them done but um, for me, fussy cutting is how I like to do things. So, um, if if that's what you're thinking, like if you decide you want to get these from me, certainly that's an option. Um, so I cut out my tab, and then I just use a Pigma. It's a Sakura Pigma brush pen. It's like a food no suke pen to write out my month. And I I just love these pens. I get them at Desairs, and they come in three different sizes. They come in the food no suke size, which is the small and a medium and in a big brush and uh, they're some of my favorite brush pens and um, at this point I decide the page needs a little bit more color so I don't stick anything down yet I grab this stencil which is uh, Mod Podge is the brand of the stencil and I grab some Spice Marmalade Distress Ink which is a lovely color for fall and I just put down a little bit of a pattern I think Distress Inks are still they're the, one of the first ways I learned to add color to a page and they're still one of my favorites you don't have to worry about it bleeding through anything. It's beautifully subtle or as bright as you want. And I just think it adds such a lovely pop of color. So it's just a, a really simple thing you can do and it really helps the page out, I think. So then I'm ready to start sticking things down. I put down my tape and I just have to trim off the edges because I never get it right on the first try. <laughs> and, um, and then I'm ready to put my tab down. I have a, like, tab punches and things but these ones I drew out by hand because I didn't have a punch for this size or for this shape but I, I've really been liking that shape lately and then I know that's going in the middle but then I remember I've got these flower stickers I've shown this book on my channel before and on the first day of September I actually saw the very first sunflower of the season and so I decided I want to put one on this page um, but that, that one's too big so I ended up going with a smaller one because the sunflowers I saw actually were quite small they were only about two feet tall like it looked like they just sprung out of the ground and so I set that down in behind where I'm going to put the September and then it needs a stem so I grab my Cotman colors oh I guess I don't grab that next <laughs> it's like I've never seen this video before um, so <laughs> I um, use my Gansy Tambi colors to add a little bit of shimmer to the flower so that it matches the washi tape on the other side I like to have common elements and I just use the light color on the light parts of the flower and I use that reddish color on the reddish part of the flower and it works really well. I just love these paints. They're, um, they're so shimmery but I just use a translucent layer and that way you can still see the flower. 
And then these are my Cotman colors, and I use a combination of Hooker's Green, and then I just mix in a little bit of sepia to tone it down a little bit so that I can draw my stem. And it takes a little bit of a leap of faith because I'm going to try to paint a straight line without a guide, but it actually turns out okay. So I just kind of anchor my hand down on, and, and slide my whole hand down to make, the, uh, to make a straight line, and it came up mostly straight. I can live with that. But that little petal sticking down is really annoying me because I don't know how to connect the stem to the flower, so I have to lift the whole thing up again and then uh, finish the stem. And it still looks a little bit sparse, so I end up putting a leaf on the side. And I try to paint in some details on the leaf with the same color, but a little darker, but they didn't show up. So again, I just blend in a little bit of sepia and go over it again. And add a little shadow to the bottom of the leaf and the side of the um, stem. And now I have a lovely little flower. <laughs> I'm really happy how it turned out. And then I'm ready to put my date sticker down. I'm really liking the clear stickers. It painted out kind of faded, but uh, or like it printed out faded, but I think it works. Um, and then I'm going to write just hello, so it says hello September. And I could have used a brush marker, but I didn't have the kind of brownish red or brownish orange shade that I wanted. So I ended up mixing it up on my palette with some cadmium red light and some orange and some uh, cadmium orange and a little bit of sepia. And then I get this nice tone. And so to do this lettering, I just write it out normal in capital letters first, and then I go back over all of the downstrokes and thicken them up. And I'm still not quite happy with it, so I grab my finest pen, which is a Micron 005, and I do the same kind of thing we did on the cover where I just draw a little line on the left and top side of each stroke, and that makes it a little bit bolder. And so it says, hello, September. <laughs> And then the only thing that's left is just to do my writing. So yeah, this is how my first page turned out, and um, I'm just so thrilled with how it's working out. I, I can't wait to hear what you guys think of it. In this book, I'm going to try to do a little bit less scrappy and a little bit more artsy, and so I think this page got me off on the right start. And uh, I've done a couple more since then, and I think it's working out pretty well. And there it is, the finished page. So yeah, let me know what you think. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day.